Hello everyone, Professor Christensen here. Um, in this video, we are going to finish up the accounting cycle. So hopefully you watched part one of this series. There were two of them, the accounting cycle part one and part two. And you'll see on your screen what we did in the last video. The last video, we went through all of these transactions and we talked about which accounts to debit and credit. And we worked in our journal. This is what our general journal looks like. And we recorded all of our, uh, all of the transactions into our journal. Okay. We also talked a little bit about the chart of accounts because there are lots of new words when you deal with the accounting cycle for the first time. All right. So today, now, if you haven't watched the first video, you might want to go back and do that. The journals and making those decisions as to what accounts to debit and credit, that's kind of the part that requires a little more thought. You're going to see this part is kind of mechanical. In real life, of course, it's done by computers, um, but we do need to understand the flow of information and, and also all of the terminology. What's the difference between a journal and a ledger? And how does information get from one place to the next? So this video, we're going to talk about posting from the journal into the ledger and then preparing a trial balance. Okay. So Here's the thing. We made all the decisions before. So let's, we're going to take each of these entries one at a time and we're going to post them into our ledger. Now I gave you a hint because I put all the dates in here already to save us some time. So first thing we have a debit to cash here. All right. So your T account has debits on the left and credits on the right. Okay. And cash remember is a debit balance account. So when you're done here, your balance should be on the left as a debit balance. If you have a credit balance in cash, that means your cash is overdrawn. You paid more money, you wrote more checks than you had money in your account, or more likely if you're in an accounting class and everything is set up kind of neat and organized, you probably made a mistake somewhere along the way. Okay. So a debit here becomes a debit here. So we're going to put 500,000 into our cash account. Now this is adding up because I've set the formula in here already. So right now we see our balance in our cash account is 500,000. All right. So let's just highlight that. So we know that we did that next up. We're going to credit common stock for 5,000. Remember these are in the same order, financial statement order, assets, liabilities, liabilities are down here. Equity is over here and then revenue and expense. Common stock is an equity account. So we're putting in, $500,000 credit into common stock. So a debit becomes a debit, a credit becomes a credit. This is very mechanical. Okay. But I know some students struggle with how to find balances in T accounts. So we're going to go through the process, but we'll go through it fairly quickly. All right. Next up, we have a debit to prepaid rent. Okay. So we're going to debit prepaid rent for $8,000. We'll highlight it. Oops. Highlighted the wrong one. Let's highlight it to make sure that we know that we took care of that. And then we're going to credit cash for $8,000. Okay. All right. So we got those two. Next up, we have a debit to office equipment. Office equipment is an asset, right? So it's a debit balance. Remember we're increasing our office equipment because here we bought some. So our office equipment's going up. We also owe money. So this is a credit to accounts payable. So we're crediting our accounts payable for $15,000. All right. Debit cash. Cash is coming in. Cash has a debit balance. So when we debit it, that means it's going up. Remember it's different than your checking account, right? Okay. Next up service revenue. Revenue has a credit balance. If you haven't watched the debit and credit video, make sure you know your dealer D E A L O R or D E A L E R that helps you to remember which accounts have debit and credit balances, right? Because D E A accounts have debit balances. The L O R accounts have credit balances. D E A is dividends, expenses, and assets. LOR is liabilities, owner's equity, and revenue. Okay. So there's a whole video on that that will help you with your debit and credit video, uh, debit and credit balances if you need that. All right. Next up, advertising expense is debited. So we're just taking the debit from here, putting it into the advertising expense account. Cash is credited. 
we're going to put our credit to cash over here on the right side right because right is credit next up we're debiting salaries expense for twenty three hundred dollars debit salaries expense mark it off credit cash because we paid salary so our cash is going down credit to cash decrease to cash all right next up cash is going up in this case we got paid ahead of time deferred revenue means we got paid for something that we haven't done yet we haven't performed the services in this case all right but deferred revenue is a funny account because students think that it's revenue but it's not notice where it is it's listed here with your liabilities why you owe your customers services okay all right next up we have a debit to accounts receivable because we performed some services for customers but they haven't paid us yet accounts receivable means our customers owe us money all right here we go and service revenue so we we did to the services but our our customers haven't paid us yet they owe us the twelve thousand dollars Okay, receivable means we're going to receive money in the future. All right, accounts payable. Now, here's a debit to accounts payable. What does that mean? Well, accounts payable has a credit balance. So if we're debiting it, it's going down. So our accounts payable is going down. Why? We paid some. Okay, we paid some. We have a credit to cash. So credit cash for a thousand dollars. Okay next up rent expense is being debited so that means we have some rent that we didn't have before we paid rent or in this case we had paid it ahead of time so we're just recording that it expired and we're going to credit our prepaid rent okay prepaid rent is going down our prepaid rent was eight thousand but now we're going to credit it for four thousand so our balance now what's left is four thousand dollars all right, we have a debit to depreciation expense for two fifty. I'm going to add in our date here, which is three thirty. Format that the same. Okay, so we have a debit to depreciation expense for two fifty. It's an expense just like any other expense. We're going to credit accumulated depreciation for two fifty. Accumulated depreciation is a funny account. It's an asset account, but it has a credit balance. Why? It's a contra asset. Okay. If you go back and, and look when we recorded that on the other video, accumulated depreciation is a contra asset. It reduces the value of your asset. So here, what we're going to say is the carrying value or book value of our equipment is 15,000 minus 250. So it's going to be 14,750 on your balance sheet. Okay. Accumulate. I tell my students accumulated depreciation, a contra asset account. It's got to be married to some other account. It's not a single person, not a single account. It can't be by itself. Okay. A contra account means it's, it's connected to some other account. So in this case, this is a contra to office equipment. Okay. These two are married. Okay. Next up salaries expense this was this, these are the salaries that we owed our employees at the end of the month okay same date nope it's not liking that okay let's mark that off and then our last credit is to salaries payable because our our employees earned some money but we haven't paid them yet so we owe them salaries, right? You, you don't always get paid on the last day of the month. Sometimes your employer owes you money. That's salaries payable to them. All right, last one is we have a debit to dividends. Remember, dividends is a an equity account, but it has a debit balance. Why does it have a debit balance? Because equity accounts don't have debit balances, right? Equity accounts have credit balances, but dividends are kind of like a contra equity account you can kind of think of it like that they reduce your equity right so it's it's a reduction of retained earnings we don't want to hit retained earnings directly so what we do is we record it into a dividends account and then later on we put it into retained earnings okay last one we have a credit to cash for fifteen hundred dollars 
okay and we're done okay so that process is very mechanical all right so depending on how you do your assignments in your class you know sometimes the computer might just do this for you but you do need to understand now let's look at this how did this balance come to be 506 200 well what happened we added the 500,000, the 15,000, and the 5,000, those are all increases to cash, because cash has a debit balance, right? Then we subtracted all of these, which are decreases to cash. So this is equal to those three added up and all of these subtracted, okay? All right, let's look at our prepaid rent. We had 8,000, debit balance account, it's an asset, we credited it for 4,000. Our balance now is 4,000. Notice it's on the debit side. The balance goes on the side that it is. So if it's a debit balance account, um, your debits better be greater than your credits, which of course they are. So whichever side is greater, that's where your balance shows up. Okay. Look at service revenue. What kind of account is that? Remember dealer revenue has a credit balance. So there we go. Our balance is $27,000, okay? Um, advertising expense, uh, well, we only have one number in advertising expense, so our balance there is $1,000. And then here, our balance in our salaries expense is $3,300 because we paid $2,300 and then we owed our, our employees another $1,000 at the end. Again, expense, remember dealer, expense is a debit balance. Our balance is shown on the debit side okay now all of our other accounts only have one entry in them so whatever that amount is that's going to be our balance at the end of the period okay March 30th all right so as promised so now we've looked at a journal we looked at a chart of accounts which is just a list of accounts and remember in real life these would be numbered because you're not going to be typing words into the computer you're going to be putting numbers in right um, and then we have a ledger. All right, so a ledger shows the balance in every account. So remember last time we talked about, well, how much cash do I have? I don't know, I've got all these journal entries, right? How do I know how much cash I have? Well, now we know, we have 506,200 because we put everything into our ledger. Okay, so next up, we're gonna do a trial balance. Trial balance is gonna, it's a very helpful thing. It's going to make sure that all of our debits equal our credits. So let's do this. We're going to put in all of these balances. Okay. Prepaid rent is 4,000. So we're just taking all of the balances from our ledger and you want to make sure you put it in the right side. So notice we're going down the correct side, I should say we're going down. These are all debit balance accounts, but uh Oh, what happened to accumulate depreciation? It's a credit balance. So let's put that over there, right? Accounts payable, what kind of balance is it? Credit balance, okay? So put 14,000 into accounts payable. Our deferred revenue, 5,000. What's next? Salaries payable, $1,000. Notice these are in the same order, financial statement order. Assets, liabilities, equity, revenue, expense, all in the same order, okay? Financial statement order. What's your most liquid asset? Cash. Because assets are listed in order of liquidity. So you know, no matter whose chart of accounts you look at, or whose ledger, or whose trial balance, first account's going to be some kind of cash, because that's your most liquid asset. Okay, let's finish up our trial balance. We have common stock of 500000 We don't have anything in retained earnings. Why not? Does anybody know the answer to that? Why is there nothing in retained earnings yet? If you've gone forward and you've done closing entries, then you know why. Um, the retained earnings is generally your opening balance. So if there's a zero balance here, which there is, I'll just type it in. There's a zero balance. That means that this company has not existed before this period. This was the first time that it was in business because there was nothing there. This is usually the beginning retained earnings, okay, in your initial trial balance. All right, let's get our expenses. We have salaries expense and we have rent expense, 4,000. And then finally we have depreciation expense. Okay, so now we're gonna add these things up and cross our fingers that our debits equal our credits. By the way, if they don't, 
then something went wrong, right? Okay, beautiful. 547, 250, our debits equal our credits, okay? Later on, we did actually a few adjusting entries here. So technically, this could be either a trial balance or an adjusted trial balance. But if this is an adjusted trial balance, then what we do is these are the numbers for our financial statements, right? Where does cash, accounts receivable, office equipment, where do all these things go? Hopefully you said balance sheet. Those are all of your balance sheet accounts, okay? Down here, all of your income statement accounts. There they are, bam, just take them out. Throw them on your income statement and you have your income statement, right? Income statement is revenues minus expenses. Balance sheet is assets equals liabilities plus stockholders equity, okay? All right, so we're gonna wrap it up today for today. So that's an introduction to journal entries. Um, well, last, last one was journal entries. This is an introduction to your ledger. So we know what a ledger looks like and a trial balance. Trial balance is simply a list of accounts in financial statement order and have the numbers in the debit or credit column, total them up, make sure your debits equal your credits use those numbers for your financial statements if it's an adjusted trial balance, okay? All right, well, I hope you found that helpful in your studies. I wish you all the best in studying accounting. If you enjoy the videos, please subscribe to my channel and onward and upward.